Hey, what's going on? I'm Dr. Leila Hariri, a family and cosmetic dentist for more than 22 years. And you're listening to Ask Dr. Leila. Anything you need to know about dentistry, we're going to talk about teeth, prevention, oral health, and tons more. So relax, listen, and smile. A very good morning to everyone out there. Hope everyone is doing amazing. And how are the kiddos settled in school? How's the daily routine from morning to pickup time? And most importantly for me would be to ask, how is the process of snack selection? And at school, are the children drinking plenty of water? I know in the past years, I've given lots of talks to school and spoken to counselors and school nurses, and we're all try hand in hand to make the best, but I know sometimes timing doesn't allow, but uh, please do make sure moms to send lots of uh, good healthy snacks, things that don't really stick in the pits of those teeth, and they're nutritious, and um, for drinks, really water is the best. So I'm going to go on to today's topic which is effective ways to teach children about good oral habits. Making sure your children understand the importance of good oral habits, it will go a long way in maintaining their healthy teeth and gums into adulthood. And here are a few tips to help educate your child about good oral care that will benefit them for the rest of their lives. Number one, we have to set a good example, like everything, you know, they're um, like parrots, um, copycats. They copy everything we do. So setting a good good example really goes a long way. And that helps us in reminder for ourselves, right? To, to, to do the good things. So children learn by example and enjoy copying their parents. Brush your teeth with them so they are able to learn proper care of their teeth. Brush and floss together in front of the mirror. As I always have said, make it family time. And then I usually choose one of the kids in the household to become the cop for me, to inform me after six months when I see them as to who's flossing and who's not flossing. And it, it works. So make it a family time. And as you instruct your child on correct brushing and flossing techniques, make sure you're using the same correct brushing and flossing techniques. As they grow more independent, check on them to make sure they continue to brush and floss properly and understand the importance of regular routine. Now, I've always just, this is again another number that I pulled out of my own head, but by experience, I've always asked parents to really intervene until the age of 10. Um, They can brush once a day and then you can brush once a day. They can try flossing, but please do floss for them because I oftentimes kids 10 and younger seem to miss the most important teeth, which are the back teeth, which whenever you put a piece of any food in your mouth, um, it goes straight to the back, our chewing teeth. And it's hard for them to reach. And we've always talked about having the floss on the stick, um, makes it easier for them. And once they turn 10, I, uh, I try to get them to use the regular floss. But even you adults know, if you're happy with that and we're getting good results, we can continue using the floss on the sticks. Secondly, use educational tools. There are many good videos and books to help children comprehend the value of sound oral hygiene, habits, and learning how to brush and floss properly. Start at an early age to watch instructional videos and read books together to help them understand the importance of good oral health. And in in this day and age, I would say, confidently that there's YouTube and there's plenty of good material, as long as not so good material. So we have to know uh, which ones we're showing, but good material on um, good habits and oral hygiene. Teach them about health risks. Explain the risks associated with not caring for your teeth properly, such as getting cavities, gum disease, or losing a tooth. Involve an experienced family-friendly dental practice to help give your children invaluable advice about good oral health habits. For me, I always ask uh, parents to bring the kids in 
around age two. Um, I find that's an age where I can start, you know, talking to them and, you know, planting a seed for the future. Um, that is the most important. And, you know, telling them that this goes hand in hand. It's a partnership between what I do here and the homework, which is your homework of the mouth, which is brushing and flossing daily. And that can only give us, you know, a bright, a brighter future. Engage your children in the process. Allow your children to pick out their own oral health care products when you shop for their toothbrush and toothpaste. Now, of course, everything our kids want to pick out isn't necessarily good. Make sure, for example, we're using soft bristle rather than medium hard. Um, when they're really, really young, you know, depending on if you're pro or against fluoride, but um, there's a certain amount that if you want fluoride that, you know, um, you should give. So on that lines, we need to, you know, kind of um, be involved as well, you know, not just to let anything from the grocery shelf to be brought home. But in, if, in terms of colors or maybe some designs, and when they're younger, you know, if they like some of their superheroes, that helps. That might motivate them. Make it fun and give them rewards. Having fun while brushing your teeth will give your child further incentive to keep up good oral healthy habits. Play a song for about two minutes while brushing uh, their teeth to teach them the optimal amount of time to brush. Most brushes, if they're the electric brushes, they have a two minute timer, which works perfectly well. And as I have told you guys, you know, even for adults, Pretend that your mouth is broken down into quadrants. So we have four, upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right. Spend about 30 seconds on each quadrant. That is your two minutes. Develop a dental chart to give your child positive feedback when they clean their teeth without you instructing them to do so. So what I used to do when my kids were younger was to have this chart up and put a sticker when I after they were done brushing and flossing and I would have a look if I didn't see any plaque and I thought they did a good job, they would get a sticker for that evening. Provide a reward after they have successfully followed a dental routine that you have outlined for them on that chart or however else do you know that you can, um, you can set up a game or a system um, with your kids. And definitely establish a regular dental schedule for your children. So plan to see your dentist and hygienist from the age of two. Usually before that, I don't think there's really a need unless you see as parents um, and definitely do look inside the mouth. You know, you see something is awkward, is just not right. Then yeah, absolutely bring them in. But age of two is, is a great time to start seeing the hygienist and the dental checkups. Your child's permanent teeth will come in around the age of six. And that's a really important age for those parents that uh, like sealants and know about sealants. That's the age that should not be missed because, and if they're earlier, they might get them out at five. And that's why we say average. For some, it could be seven. Um, but that those years are really very valuable um, to make sure that they're seen regularly. And to summarize, um, Long-term beautiful teeth needs to start early on and we need to install those good habits from a very early age. And most importantly, I actually miss saying this, um, the reason I, I say from an early age start bringing the kids in is because I want them to get used to the whole dental setup, being in a dental clinic, being, you know, just the whole thing. And that really lessens the fear for them in... Uh, adulthood. So as always, any questions, concerns, please reach out to our podcast at Ask Dr. Layla. And looking forward to speaking to you guys next week. Have a great one.